Hi everyone. Well, I'm sure many of you have heard that um, there's, a, there's a stratospheric warming on the way and it's going to cause uh, cold weather and bring lots of snow and various other things. Well, not really the case at the moment. There doesn't seem to be anything significant really in that respect happening in the atmosphere. Um, okay so what i'm going to do here um is something a little different usually we use our own um uh, software and, and things like that to to uh you know produce the forecast what we're going to do instead we're going to have a look at some a uh, couple of different sites online um and uh on these sites it will show the stratospheric conditions and hopefully you'll be able to kind of guess where we're um or where i'm coming from at this moment in time so we'll start it here um, using Wetters and Trail. Um, so we're not using our own software here. This is, like I said, Wetters and Trail, an online site. Um, and this is showing a core, a cold core of, uh, of air high up in the atmosphere at 10 HPA. So it varies that height a little bit, but let's call it 86,000 feet at this point. Okay. Now, so at that height, the temperature is obviously much colder. And you can see this really extreme cold core here down to around about minus 80 to minus 85 degrees Celsius. Now, if we run through the next few days, you can see, well, over the really the next week or two, you can see the cold core shifts around a bit and we get a bit of a warming taking place up towards the Asian side here. Um, but it's not a major warming, a significant stratospheric warming, the type that really has a, a significant impact down at lower levels is when we get a warming often of, of um, the temperatures rising up close to around zero, perhaps plus 10, even plus 20 degrees Celsius, um, which is massively higher than, than it should be. But in this case, the warming's up to around minus 30, maybe minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius in the warmer warmer areas. And you can see the, the vortex, which is the colder blob of, of air, just wobbling around and you know, it doesn't really know where it's going. This 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 uh, warming is buffeting it around. So what we'll do, we'll skip now to the wind at that same height. Oops, skip back there. The wind at that same height. Now you can see the same thing. The, uh, the core is pretty much where the colder air is. You can see the wind strengths here. So the winds, are, as this vortex is getting squeezed, it's, it's, you know, the winds are becoming stronger around it. Now, this is what you call a, 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 a stratospheric anticyclone here. Um, so the winds go the opposite direction. And it's still kind of a vortex in a sense, um, but in a clockwise direction instead. Now, for um, there to be a major influence down at the tropospheric level, which is the, the level which uh, we see all our main weather taking place, we would need this, this polar vortex to shift further or perhaps to split into two vortices uh spinning the same way this is like i said this is a, a clockwise vortex which is an anticyclone whereas this is the the low pressure core um and if you like i said if you had two of these with one of these in the middle and it was positioned somewhere like a, one here for example and one here with this in the middle that's when we start to see stronger influence down at lower levels now lower levels 50 hpa which is closer to uh 65,000 feet i would say um yeah it's something like that um so what we've got it's actually affecting slightly lower levels as well so we've got this cold core here again you know it's it's shifted around towards the russian area really with this warmer air um in the in the lower stratosphere and if we compare that to the winds, we can again see the vortex even lower down, you know, still spinning away here. And uh, we can run through it a little bit further. But you can see it gradually shifting its way back towards the, uh, towards the pole a little bit, maybe. Now, if we look at the wind directions around it, you can see that the winds, of course, spinning anti-clockwise. But um, across our area here we can see the winds are really kind of coming in from the northwest or west to northwest. Now, again, that's high up in the atmosphere, but this does often have an influence on what happens lower down. Now, if we were going to see, um, during a lot of cold weather that we have, have here in the UK, again, we see this vortex split into two, one perhaps over the Asian side, one towards the US and Canada. And the gap in between fills up with an anti-cyclone at this level, 
which in turn does pretty much the same down at lower levels in the atmosphere. But if we look at the lower levels of the atmosphere relative to this, it doesn't look anything like it. We've got high pressure scattered around all over the place, low pressure picking up in different places. So this isn't really influencing the weather at our level, at the, at the tropospheric level very much at all. So what that means, if you're still following me here, what that ends up me end up end will end up meaning is that this warming taking place in the stratosphere is really, as far as we can see, not likely to have any impact, or at least only going to have minimal impact on what we see at ground level. Now we uh, currently really the uh, the troposphere, the weather here is being driven by something called. The MJO. Now I won't get into it too much because it will completely bore you rambling about that because I've rambled enough already but I'll give you a quick, quick look on what that is. Okay so with the MJO without going into too much detail to have colder weather in the UK we often need to see the MJO moving into a phase seven, eight, sometimes one um, and it looks like it will be heading into phase seven uh, strongly as well. So as this, as this starts to happen, it begins to have an influence on the weather our side of the, uh, our side of the globe. Now, this is quite a strong amplitude, a strongly ampli uh, a high amplitude um, phase seven, according to the GFS model. The CFS model, not so much so. Um, the ensembles here, which is uh, the GFS model, which is run multiple times with slightly different start conditions. Won't get into that either too much, but that's also showing it to be quite strong. Um, and then the European um, model, one of the main ones, the ECMWF, is also showing a reasonable, a reasonably high amplitude phase seven, um, which at face value would mean that um, we could start to see some significant northern blocking, as it's called. So what I'm going to try and do here is try and draw on this, so you can um, on this map, so you can actually see what is likely or what can happen under these these kind of conditions. So often, what happens when we're in a phase uh, a phase seven and a phase eight, we can get uh, enhanced northern blocking um, so anywhere really in this area and sometimes up until as far up as far as Greenland we start to see uh, high pressure areas develop um, and as that happens you know it it starts to push in um, uh, colder weather from the east that you know flows down from the uh, from the Arctic or sometimes out of Russia and it you know it, it causes these type of conditions however the current uh, stratospheric pattern is more likely to um, encourage an area of high pressure to form kind of like somewhere like this, um, you know, and then so high pressure kind of forms in this area, um, so something like this, you know, um, so that in itself would bring bring in some very very mild air, um, which would be from the uh, from the west here, uh, from the Atlantic. Uh, excuse my terrible drawing here. Um, so that would be the, the current pattern in which the tro the stratosphere is supporting. So that now combined with the MJO, um, what we may end up seeing is something more like this. So we think we will start off perhaps with higher pressure building in this area here um, with areas of low pressure, um, you know, moving this kind of direction from the Atlantic for, for a while. Um, but then as the MJO starts to strengthen um, and there is some delay on it, we believe that the high pressure area there will start to weaken and high pressure will probably start to form somewhere in this kind of area with the high pressure down south starting to weaken. Now normally we'd have high pressure developing anywhere like I said from here right out across here towards Iceland even towards Greenland. 
but due to the effect, the, or at least the summer effect from the stratospheric pattern, I believe it will be forcing the um, the tropospheric pattern to not develop a full um, MJ07 type pattern for our area. So we may still see some colder air, you know, moving around the high pressure and um, bringing in some colder air from the east. But it is much more difficult to predict than what it would normally be. So all these forecasts, you know, people getting excited about um, all of this uh, potential cold weather and everything else. Well, well, it's certainly not going to be as, as simple as, as it sounds. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'll be totally honest, we're not 100% sure how this is going to evolve because of the two um, conflicting drivers, really. Uh, so, but if people, you keep hearing people saying about the stratosphere being the one that's going to turn it really cold and, and snowy and everything else, I would take that with a pinch of salt for the time being. Um, because there is no evidence to suggest that at the moment we're going to see a strong downwelling of the of the upper stratospheric vortex downwelling to the lower stratospheric vortex and then affecting you know us down here at ground level but of course i may be wrong um and things may change but of course i will let you know if that is the case uh so yeah i try to keep that as short as possible i did in fact actually make a uh a, a forecast like this a few days back um, but I decided not to post it because I was rambling so much in it and I think that, you know, everybody would have got lost. And even at this point, I believe everyone's probably already got lost in my rambling. Um, so there we go. I will leave it at that and uh, I'll try not to bore you anymore. And for those of you that did find that useful, I'm very, very glad. And if you do get a moment, um, if you could, I'd love it if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel because it's, it's becoming a bit more popular now. So it would be great to kind of get that taking off a little bit more um because it's a great place to host the videos uh so there we go anyway that's all for now i'll shut up and goodbye